Bismillah wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulillah. In the pre-Islamic Arabia, markets were established between Taif and Mecca, serving not only as trading hubs but also as platforms for various activities. Men engaged in poetry competitions, debates, and pilgrimage to the gods at the Kaaba. Among these markets, the Oqaz market gained widespread fame in Arabia. The poets of the Mu'allaqat would recite their poems at the Oqaz market. These seven lengthy poems were named Mu'allaqat because they were hung against the walls of the Kaaba. Qus, the Archbishop of Najran, eloquently delivered his speeches at the Oqaz market. The Jews, Christians and pagans felt secure in expressing their faith. The hustle and bustle in the Oqaz market would reach its peak during the four sacred months in which fighting was forbidden, thanks to the protection and safety offered during the sacred months. In disregard of the sanctity of those sacred months, al barad ibn Qais al kinani secretly attacked and killed Urwa al-Rahal ibn Udba al-Hawazini. The reason for the attack was that each year during this period, the king of Hira dispatched a caravan to Oqaz carrying musk and returning with hides, ropes and brocade from Yemen. al barad offered to guide the caravan through Kinana, his tribal lands, while Urwa al-Hawazini sought to guide it through the Hijaz via Najd. King al norman chose Urwa, which led to al barads jealous rage. He pursued the caravan, committed the crime by attacking them and fled with the goods. al barad later informed Bishr ibn Abu Hazim about Hawazini's involvement. al barad then conveyed to Bishr ibn Abu Hazim that the tribe of Hawazin intended to retaliate for the killing of Urwa by Quraysh as the crime occurred within the jurisdiction of Quraysh. Members of the Hawazin tribe pursued those from Quraysh, intercepting them before they entered the sacred sanctuary. Despite this, Hawazin, unsatisfied, issued a warning of waging war the following year at Oqaz. The conflict persisted between the two factions for four consecutive years, bringing disruption to the business, trade, speeches, poetry, oratory, and other activities. The historical records do not provide Muhammad's exact age during the Fijar or sacrilegious war, with reports suggesting he was either 15 or 20 years old. The variance may stem from the fact that the Fijar or sacrilegious war lasted for at least four years. If Muhammad witnessed its beginning at 15, he would have been close to 20 at the conclusion of the peace. There is a general agreement on the nature of Muhammad's involvement in this war. Some assert that he was assigned the task of gathering arrows that felt within the Makkah came and delivering them to his uncle for reuse against the enemy. Others argue that he personally took part in shooting these arrows. Given that the war spent four years, it is plausible that both claims hold some truth. In the years following his appointment as a prophet, Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam expressed, "I had witnessed that war with my uncle and shot a few arrows therein. How I wish I had never done so." The alliance of the virtuous are the alliance of Fudur. The sacrilegious war, also known as Fijar battle, continued for four years. People were tired of the war and the disruption it brought. There arose some promoters of good and they made a pact among themselves to establish justice, fight oppression and revive the virtuous qualities which had been obliterated in the holy land. Ibn Athir writes, After the long sacrilegious war and the damage it had done, some of the clans of the Quraysh called for this alliance and they all swore to it in the house of Abdullah ibn Jada'an. The tribes who formed the alliance pledged to one another that if ever they found a wrong person in Makkah, whether from their own people or from any other tribe, they would stand by his side and defend him so that the wrong done to him might be redressed. This fact was called the alliance of the virtuous or fudul by the Quraysh and was witnessed by the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. After Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala chose him as a prophet, he said, I witnessed an alliance with my uncles in the home of Abdullah ibn Jada'an and I would not like to exchange it for the choicest luxuries. If I were called in Islam to participate in it, 
I would respond. One can see clearly in these words of the Prophet وسلم, his approval of this alliance, standing against any oppressor, no matter how powerful he or she may be, and sympathy for any oppressed person, no matter how insignificant he or she may be, are the spirit of Islam. Islam enjoins good and forbids evil. As we have seen, even in pre-Islamic Arabia, the four sacred months, Zul Qaeda, Zul Hijjah, Muharram and Rajab held significance and fighting was forbidden during this period. This tradition rooted in the Abrahamic practice was honored by the people of Arabia. It allowed the Arabs a chance to flourish in their trade, business, social interactions and other matters. Everyone was obliged to honor the sanctity of these four months and refrain strictly from engaging in any form of conflict. However, the sacrilegious war was a violation of the sanctity of the four months. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran about these four months in Surah Tawbah, Ayah 36. Indeed, the number of months with Allah is 12 months in the register of Allah from the day He created the heavens and the earth. Of these four are sacred. That is the correct religion, so do not wrong yourself during them. Remember, sharing a good word is a charity. اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد وأصحابه أجمعين والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته